Experiences While Hunting in Massachusetts, Part 1 Let me start off by saying that I made this account specifically for this post. I've been reading this thread for the better part of three years now, and I always wished that I had an experience I could share on here with the Reddit community. I know a lot of what's posted on this thread isn't true, or just exaggerated, but what's about to follow is true, and I think this is probably the best place to post this, because I'm not exactly sure what happened, and I'm hoping you guys can help me figure it out. Let's start with a little background info. Ever since I can remember, I've been into the outdoors, fishing, hunting, camping, and everything in between. My family likes to joke that I was raised by wolves, but to be honest, I kind of wish I was. I've always found myself at peace when I'm alone and cut off from the world with only nature to keep me company, and hunting has always been the best outlet for me. Not many people truly understand the pure beauty us hunters witness. Being able to watch the sun rise from complete darkness and seeing it disappear while you're strapped 30 feet up in a tree is something not many people can say they've experienced. It's breathtaking. But on the evening of December 16th, 2016, things were a lot different. The deer hunting season was winding to a close, and with about two weeks left in the season, I was eager to fill any of my buck tags. I was sitting in one of my favorite stands, right in this little creek bed, in between two small hills, which deer follow along to get to a large stand of white oaks where they like to paw for acorns. It's a heavily traveled trail, and I was expecting a lot of action. I parked the car around 1 p.m. in the entrance to the state park. This gave me plenty of time to load the muzzle loader and head into the spot, which was about a 15-minute walk. After getting situated in the stand, I texted my parents to let them know I'd text them when I got back to the car and was on my way home. With that out of the way, I turned my phone on silent and waited for the deer to move. The first thing I began to notice was that it was eerily silent. Usually you hear a bird or squirrel moving around, but they were nowhere to be found, which I took as a good sign at first. They tend to make a lot of noise, and it's always better to hear the deer coming so you can get ready for a shot. Around 2.30, I began hearing something moving around me. I couldn't quite see anything because of the brush and trees around me, but I knew something was coming in. I picked up the muzzle loader, and just as I was doing that, the hard plastic butt of the gun hit the hollow metal of the stand and made a huge clanking sound. The movement around me immediately stopped. Dang it, I thought. Deer have very good hearing capabilities, and if one was out there, they definitely heard that. I proceeded to raise the gun to my lap and waited for the moment to start up again. But before I could, I heard a loud knock on a tree about 50 yards from me. It sounded like hard wood on wood. I definitely thought it was weird, but you hear a lot of things like that in the woods, especially in a state park. I just kind of brushed it off and kept on waiting. After about ten minutes, I heard the same sound again though. This time, it was more to my right and farther away. I'm not really sure why, but I started to feel kind of nervous and this rarely ever happens. I knew the woods I was in very well, and I was very comfortable hunting in them, but something was definitely wrong. At this point, the sun was setting, 
prime time for deer hunting. Though I was still shaken up, I wasn't ready to leave and risk spooking any deer, so I stayed put. This was where things started to go downhill. Around 3.30, the movement started up again. It started to my left and was moving right along the trail towards the oaks. I was starting to think maybe a deer until I heard it again. A loud crack of wood on wood. I was freaking out. I had that kind of sixth sense feeling that I was not safe. It was getting darker by the minute and all I really had for defense was a gun and only one shot before I had to go through a two minute reloading process. In other words, if I actually was in danger and missed, I was screwed. So I did the only thing I could do. I froze. I sat still while the movement got closer and closer until it stopped about 30 yards to my left. I couldn't see anything. The sunset was coming fast and I just wanted to get the hell out of there. I was about to get my phone out to text someone when I heard a loud stick snap under a footfall. It was louder than the constant sound of leaves crunching I'd been hearing for the past half hour or so, which made me jolt my head up. All movement stopped. It got deadly silent. I looked and listened for about a minute, then took my phone out. Just after I clicked the bright screen on, I heard a loud screech from where the stick had just snapped. I almost crapped myself, and anyone in my situation would have. If you've ever seen The Lord of the Rings, the screech sounded exactly like that high-pitched sound the evil king makes when hurt. It was just as terrifying. Whatever it was saw me, and I couldn't see it. Soon, I reacted in the only way I thought I could. I took the safety off the muzzleloader, aimed it towards a tree, and shot. Whatever made the screeching sound got the message and took off crashing through the woods, and I was left shaking in my tree stand, trying to reload so that whatever was out there didn't come back. I waited until I could hear the crashing of branches and leaves no more and got out of the tree stand ASAP. I practically sprinted out of the woods with my headlamp on high and with the gun in my hands the whole time until I got to the car. I threw my stuff into the back seat and drove like mad home. I eventually calmed down and acted like nothing happened. I never actually told anyone what happened either. To be completely honest, I didn't want to come off as a pussy who got scared and just ran. But I'm telling you that every time I enter the woods now, I think back to that evening, and it makes me second-guess entering a place I was once comfortable enough with to call my second home. I do have some odd experiences that have happened to people I know as well as myself. Let me know if you want to hear them. Regardless, thank you for listening, and let me know if anything similar has happened to you. Odd Occurrences While Hunting in Massachusetts Part 2 Another story that I would like to share actually happened in a different part of the state. Part of my family lives in the more eastern parts of Massachusetts, and this is a story that happened to my cousin and a few of his friends while they were camping around the Freetown Fall River State Forest. Many people in Massachusetts are familiar with a place called the Bridgewater Triangle. This is an area in southeast Massachusetts, 
where there's a lot of interesting history and a huge amount of very strange things that have been happening since pilgrim times. There are a few places in particular where these things happen, and one such place is the Freetown Fall River State Forest. For those of you who don't know, the State Forest has a very dark past. There have been cryptic sightings, confirmed Satanists performing rituals in the forest, and murders. Some of those murders are actually tied to the said Satanists. With that being said, it is a very beautiful park with a lot to offer myself, enjoying fishing and hiking in the park when I head down to visit. But this place is pretty crazy, and I'm not exactly sure why he and his friends would want to camp there. So my cousin and his two friends went camping overnight in the woods. This isn't out of the ordinary for him, because he's also really into the outdoors and has a lot of experience camping, and his friends are similar in that aspect. He told me that it was late June in 2011, and he and his friends were fresh out of school. They were going to be seniors in high school and were pumped about heading into summer, so like any normal teenage kids, they brought a 30-pack of Natty Ice in with them and set up camp in this clearing. The spot, which I have been to, is in a large stand of pine saplings that pretty much create a thick wall around them, which was perfect. No one could ever see them, but they couldn't really see what was around them. Since they were illegally drinking, this was the best place they could find, so they pitched their tent, started a huge fire, and settled in for the night. My cousin isn't a really big drinker, and he thinks Natty Ice is disgusting, so he only had a couple of beers, while the other two friends polished off the rest through the night. Around 1 a.m., some odd things started to happen. First, it was a very bright night. The moon lit up most of their surroundings, but it was still very dark. Another thing to note was that there was barely any wind, which made the woods pretty quiet. He kept saying that it was a beautiful night, and it really sounded like it was. It got dark around 7 p.m., and the guys were just hanging out, listening to music, talking, joking around, etc. They had heard a few coyotes off in the distance, but nothing close, and they were enjoying themselves. Around 12.30, they started to realize that they wouldn't have enough wood to make the fire last through the night, so they decided to go gather some more. One of my cousin's friends was pretty screwed up, so he stayed back at the camp, while the other two went about 60 yards down the small trail they came in from to gather wood. There was a bunch of blowdowns there, so they started to gather logs and sticks to haul back to the camp. After about half an hour, maybe more, he said that they saw a blue light off in the distance. He noted that it was pretty weird because there wasn't a lot of people who would be wandering around a state forest at 1 a.m., especially not this one. They just kind of brushed it off and started to take the wood they had back to camp with them, but both guys felt pretty uneasy about the light. On their way back, they were still upbeat and having a good time, but right as they were about to head back into the cluster of pines, they heard a high-pitched scream coming from the direction of the blue light. He said that it was blood-curdling and that he has never heard a scream like that before. It scared the living crap out of them, so they booked it back to the site where they had found their friend still hammered and the fire still going. Now, hearing a loud scream like that would make anyone get out of there, but since they were convinced it was another person, they weren't ready to just leave them there if they were hurt. They brought up calling the cops, but they were all drinking and didn't want to get arrested or in trouble with any of their parents. 
So they decided the only thing they could do was make sure that it wasn't anyone who was in danger or hurt. So they decided to go and check out the spot. My cousin said they didn't really have much protection except for a folding pocket knife and one steak knife they were using for food. So they sharpened up some sticks they had gathered and headed out with flashlights in hand. At the edge of the pine saplings, they started searching for the source of the screaming, but couldn't see anything. They wandered around the area for 15 to 20 minutes and couldn't see anything, so they started to head back when one of my cousin's friends saw the blue light. This time it was in a different spot, but they decided they needed to check it out before heading back to camp, so they walked closer. They wanted to make sure they weren't sneaking up on someone, so he said that the guys started talking about guns to make it seem like they were armed with more than just some pointy sticks. They got closer to the light, which they found out was an LED flashlight that someone had dropped. Now they were really scared. I mean, they were definitely freaked out by the scream, but that could have been a lot of things, and they knew that. They were familiar with the usual suspects like a fisher cat, fox, or even an owl, but now they knew for sure that it was a person. The guys dropped the light and sprinted back to the camp. They couldn't leave all their stuff or their parents would know something was up, so they just stayed the whole night. Needless to say, none of them slept. Luckily, nothing else really happened until it got light again. They packed up their gear and started out. All the guys agreed not to stay any longer than they needed to, but one of the friends got curious and wanted to see if anything was around the area of the light, just in case they accidentally stumbled upon a murder site. When they walked up to where the light had been, they noticed two things. First, there was a large area that was cleared out. No leaves, no sticks, just a patch of dirt, but it didn't look disturbed. Second, the flashlight was gone. That just added more reason to get out of there, so they left in a hurry and went back home. I know they all told a few people, but they weren't eager to report it to the police because they weren't sure if anything had actually happened. It was just something odd that happened, and they wanted to keep it quiet. My cousin still goes into the state forest all the time. It's one of his favorite places to be, but he doesn't camp there anymore, and I highly doubt that his friends do either.